Welcome back. So I'm really excited today to derive for you the potential flow vector field, uh, which is essentially a solution of Laplace's equation. So this is one of my absolute favorite lectures because we're starting to really put the pieces together of what we learned from vector calculus, div, grad, and curl. And we're going to use those to derive one of the most important partial differential equations in all of physics. This describes uh, gravitational and electric potentials away from masses and charges. Uh, it describes the you know, steady state heat equation in an object. And it also describes uh, lots of approximate fluid flows that were designed, uh, used in the early years of aircraft design. So really exciting. Uh, we're going to develop the potential flow and Laplace's equation right now. And specifically, we are going to define the potential flow as a steady, incompressible, irrotational flow. So this is a steady, and I'm going to define these mathematically in a minute, a steady, incompressible, incompressible, meaning it can't be compressed, it's, it's a divergence free, uh, if you like, and irrotational, irrotational, so there's no curl or no rotation of the flow. So potential flow is a steady, incompressible, irrotational flow uh, v, v uh, arrow. And we're going to assume that this is uh, a two-dimensional a two-dimensional vector field v1, v2, uh, which are functions of x and y. And so mathematically, what we mean by steady, uh, steady here means that dv dt equals zero. So partial v, partial t equals zero. So there, this is not changing in time, it's fixed for all of time. Uh, incompressible, incompressible, Again, we already know what incompressible means. It means that the divergence of v is equal to zero. The divergence uh, of v is equal to zero. So it's not kind of sourcing or sinking. And irrotational, irrotational means that the curl of my vector field, the curl of my vector field uh, is equal to zero. Okay, good. So um, this is what we mean by a steady, incompressible, irrotational flow. Now, at the very outset, this seems extremely restrictive. It seems like this is going to be too restrictive, and maybe these flows won't be interesting at all because we're putting so many constraints on them. But again, it turns out that with these constraints, uh, we still have a really, really powerful class of, of flow fields or uh, of, of vector fields given, uh, given by these constraints. And so let me also write down what these are in components, just because uh, just we're going to use these later. So incompressibility means that partial v1 partial x plus partial v2 partial y is equal to 0. And the curl condition means that uh, partial v2 with respect to x, partial v2 with respect to x, minus partial v1 with respect to y, equals zero. So we're looking for vector fields that satisfy, uh, that satisfy these properties. Okay, now what vector fields actually satisfy these? So it turns out that, uh, let me just draw a line here. So this is what we want, and I'm going to show you what vector fields actually satisfy this. So incompressibility and irrotationality are automatically satisfied. So these uh, are satisfied automatically. These are satisfied automatically if we have a gradient flow uh, if v equals the gradient of some potential phi for a real valued potential for a real valued potential uh, phi. We've already talked about potential fields and gradient flows. So this is a gradient flow. This is automatically satisfied for a real valued potential phi that satisfies that satisfies um, del squared phi equals zero. And this is Laplace's equation. So this is the extremely important Laplace's equation. 
And you already know how much uh, I like and respect and admire Laplace. Uh, so Laplace's name is on the Eiffel Tower. Um, one of the great, great mathematicians. Uh, um, this is Laplace's equation. OK, so I'm going to, to kind of demonstrate for you that this is absolutely true, that if we have a potential function phi that satisfies Laplace's equation, then by construction, the gradient flow associated is incompressible and irrotational. And because this is not changing in time, it's also steady. OK, that one we get it kind of for free. So we know that gradient fields are always irrotational. So this is true. So irrotationality is true for any, any gradient flow. So it's really whether or not incompressibility is true for this particular gradient flow. And so um, one thing we could do is we could literally just take the divergence of this uh, and show that we get Laplace's equation. So that's what I'm going to do. So am I going too fast? Maybe I'm going too fast. Let me say this again. This is really, really important. We want a vector field, V, that is steady, incompressible, and irrotational. We can automatically get irrotationality and steadiness just for any potential flow. Any gradient of a scalar potential will be irrotational and steady as long as this doesn't change in time. But for us to have also incompressibility, we need this potential to be a very, very special potential, phi, that satisfies Laplace's equation. So what I'm going to show is that if Laplace's equation is true, then the divergence of this vector field is equal to 0. So let's compute div v. So the divergence of v is equal to the dot product of partial partial x, partial partial y. I apologize for my squeaky marker. I know it drives some of you crazy. That's the, the del dot. And v is equal to grad phi. So this is partial phi partial x and partial phi partial y. Remember, if I take the gradient of a scalar, I get a vector of its partial derivatives. And so now the dot product, the divergence of this gradient field, is equal to um, just the product of the first two elements plus the product of the second two elements. So this is the second partial derivative, partial squared phi partial x squared, plus partial squared two partial derivatives of y plus partial squared phi partial y squared. And this is the definition of the Laplacian operator. So div of grad of phi is the Laplacian operator. So kind of by construction, this is the definition of nabla squared phi. And we've already said that this is equal to 0. That was our, our constraint, is that uh, we're only dealing with potential functions phi that are the solution of Laplace's equation. And so this is equal to 0 because this is equal to 0. And so what we've shown here is that if our vector field v is the gradient of a potential that satisfies Laplace's equation, we get incompressibility uh, for free. And we already had irrotationality because it's a, a gradient field. OK, so this is extremely, extremely useful. Uh, this Laplace's equation comes up everywhere. It comes up all throughout uh, the physical sciences. And this is a particularly important set of vector fields. This uh, potential flow vector field, we're going to use it to analyze fluid flows that are irrotational and incompressible. OK, uh, good. So what else do I want to tell you? The solutions of Laplace's equation are an incredibly important class of functions that have really deep roots in complex variable theory. So maybe I'll briefly show you what that looks like um, in, in complex variable theory. So if I have a analytic complex function, uh, so I'm going to assume that you know something about complex variables. So if we have uh, z, a z variable equals x plus i, y. OK, so this is a real plus imaginary part. And this is a complex variable. Then I can have functions like z squared. That is a complex function uh, of the complex variable z. And this is called an analytic function because it can be uh, kind of reduced to a simple expression in terms of this elemental 
variable z. The, the real part of z, or the amplitude of z, is not an analytic function because it can't be written as like a power series or Taylor series expansion of z. Anyway, a lot of background, uh, complex variable z, analytic functions of z, like polynomials, things like that, uh, cosines, sines, e to the z. And so if I have a complex uh, potential, I can take, um, if I have a complex potential, phi of z, which is equal to uh, this little guy here, little phi of x and y, plus i times psi of x and y, then um, this is called a complex potential. This is my potential function, and this is my stream function. And what I'm going to show you is that for analytic functions phi of z, like z squared, z cubed, e to the z, sine of z, cosine of z, for special complex functions phi of z, the potential function and the stream function both satisfy Laplace's equation. And so you can take the gradient of this and get a potential flow. Now I'm going to go a lot more into detail in this uh, in, in more lectures. So if this is going kind of fast, that's OK. We're going to dig in deeper here. But I want to tell you why kind of and how we're going to find these vector fields that are the gradient uh, of potentials, which are the solution of Laplace's equation. So this is a whole huge field of complex analysis to find these functions. Uh, so again, I'm going to call this the potential function. Uh, potential function. And this is called the stream function. And these have real meanings uh, for fluid flows. And this is some complex uh, complex potential. And again, if phi, I'm just going to write this out, if big phi of z is an analytic function, and this, this has a real meaning in the complex plane, it means we satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann conditions, uh, and it also means that if you take the derivative of this function, no matter how you ap approach that derivative uh, with like little delta x's or delta y's or delta z's approaching zero, you get the same answer. It's a, it's a very intuitive uh, definition of a function. For analytic uh, functions phi of z, and again, I mean like uh, z squared, z cubed, dot, 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 all polynomials, cosine of z and sine of z, uh, e to the z, Turns out log of z away from the origin is analytic. Um, so any nicely behaved analytic function uh, phi of z, then, then both the real and the imaginary parts, phi and psi, satisfy Laplace's equation. Satisfy Laplace's equation. Laplace's equation. Um, so what we have is del squared phi equals zero and del squared psi equals zero. And you could actually derive this. So this is actually a condition for, for a function to be analytic, its real and imaginary parts have to satisfy Laplace's equation. So that's actually a functional working definition of what an analytic function in the complex plane is. And you can essentially uh, write this out explicitly for the real and the imaginary parts of phi and z. And you can kind of set them equal and show that there are conditions on, on you know, what this has to be for these to be analytic functions. OK, good. Um, so what we have done is we've derived the conditions to have a potential flow that is steady, incompressible, and irrotational. We've related it uh, very concretely to La Laplace's equation. So the potentials are solutions of Laplace's equations. And those are intimately related to this field of complex analysis uh, called analytic function theory. Okay? Now what we're going to do in future lectures is we're going to start taking specific examples of phi of z, like z squared. This z squared actually establishes a real and an imaginary part that are solutions of Laplace's equation and give us potential flow fields. So we can take z squared. If you want to do this as a homework before the next lecture, go through the, the math of expanding out z squared, can, can collect its real and imaginary parts, take its real part, which is a potential function, and compute its gradient field, and show that the gradient field is 
incompressible, irrotational, maybe plot the vector field. Uh, and that'll really start convincing you that you can actually use these analytic functions to develop these really interesting uh, and powerful class of vector fields that, that are uh, related to Laplace's equation. Okay, excellent. Uh, so a lot more on this. We'll talk about different types of potential flows and all about Laplace's equation. We'll go way, way more into depth in Laplace's equation soon. All right, thank you.